UFC 257. It's gonna be a banger. It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. Conor McGregor rematches Dustin Poirier. Al Mac, tell me what you're feeling. Yeah, this is this is an interesting one, man. Like uh, this is one of those ones where you come in and you think, you know, McGregor, you know, with all the spectacle and everything surrounding him, all the high expectations, McGregor should win this fight easily, right? I feel like there's, you know, you have to take some hesitation here. Um, you have to look at how different Dustin Poirier is compared to he was when they fought the last time. Uh, you know, just look at the numbers, okay? So Poirier has had 20 fights in the UFC. He's won nine of them inside the distance. If we compare that to now, compare that to McGregor. McGregor has had 11 in the UFC. He's finished seven. So technically, Poirier has more finishes in the UFC. Um, you know, that, that doesn't really mean anything, but just based on the experience Dustin is a little bit more in that, uh, you know, he's been there. He's been there a little bit more. Uh, you know, the only times that you think that with McGregor, you know, McGregor got flattened against Habib. He went, he went the, you know, he went the distance with Nate the second time. And, you know, some people even argue that Nate won that second fight. So, sure. like, there's, we have, Connor's like he's almost like a he's like a Deontay Wilder in a sense that if he doesn't get the fight finished very quickly, it's it's up in the air. Who knows what's going to happen? You know that's what everybody thought when he fought Floyd Mayweather, right? Everyone was like Connor's going to go out there and he's going to flatten him in the first round. Obviously, that's not how that went, but you know uh, it's it's all about he has so many gaps in his showing. Because then you know you look at how when he fight Cow when he fought Cowboy, that's exactly what he did. He went out there and he knocked him out in forty seconds. When he fought Aldo, he went out there and he knocked him out. Like uh, it, it feels like if Dustin can get past that first round, that this is anybody's fight. If Dustin can hold, you know, if he can hold him off, if he can get Connor, who hasn't fought since two thousand eighteen, or no, sorry. He hasn't fought, you know, more than a round in the UFC since 2018, since he lost to Habib, putting the cowboy fight aside. You know, look at, go back and look at Dustin Poirier versus Gu D uh, Justin Gaethje, okay? If that Dustin Poirier is in this fight against Conor McGregor, he is so live. He is so live at plus 300. So I feel like, I feel like the best way to approach this fight is if you want to have some fun, if you want to take a shot, uh, you know, I'm going to bet on Dustin. I like, I'm going to wait until, you know, he gets up to that plus 290, plus 300 range because I think he's going to get there. Uh, we saw with Cowboy, he got up to three to one. You know, uh, I could still see some buyback come in on Dustin. Uh, but yeah, I feel like bet Dustin, have some fun bet Connor to win in the first round, which I think you could get at like plus 400 and uh, bet the under under one and a half is at even money right now. Uh, but look, I think that if that, if, if Connor doesn't knock him out in the first round, if the fight goes over one and a half rounds, I think that this is Dustin Poirier's fight, his boxing. The thing about Connor is Connor is all about the precision strikes, his combinations Although they are deadly, they're not exactly overwhelming. Where Dustin, if Dustin gets one good shot, he can overwhelm you with his boxing, with his, you know, with, uh, with his combinations. Uh, they're just they're two different style of fighters. But I feel like I feel like Connor needs to just cold knock out Dustin, whereas Dustin could wear him out. Dustin could do similar to what Nate did you know, in that first fight. And uh, I think Dustin's live here, man. And I'm super excited to hear what you think about this one. Ooh, boy, this is a big time fight and a very important fight in how things play out in the UFC, right? This fight really dictates 
the direction that the lightweight division moves into the future. I mean, this is a fight that's so important. We're talking about whether the champion who currently sits with the belt is going to continue to fight or not. This fight's so important. Like, we're not just talking about, you know, a couple fighters' futures being in the mix. This is going to be an absolutely huge turning point that will dictate the lightweight division for years to come. So I cannot stress how important of a fight this truly is. Here's how I see the fight playing out, Al. But before I even talk about how I see the fight playing out, I just want to talk about some of the strategery of Conor McGregor and the fights Conor McGregor picks and chooses. Because let's keep it real. Conor McGregor is the only guy in the UFC who we've ever seen get to absolutely hand pick every matchup. Every person, you know, but that's the thing, right? You're you're receiving an opportunity. You're receiving the biggest payday of your life. He's going to change your bum life just choosing you to get in there to have the opportunity to maybe beat him, right? And sure enough, Nate Diaz went out there and did just that. And uh, like you said, Al, even questionable in that second fight, very close fight. But I tell you what, Al, to me, I think there's a reason Conor McGregor has yet again chosen Dustin Poirier as the guy that he's going to kick off his 2021 season, he likes to call it. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that we, we see Connor, he's got a variety of guys that he, that he could choose to take in there, but I do believe Connor sees the same shortcomings in Dustin Poirier as he did initially when they fought. Now, don't get me wrong. Dustin Poirier so much better than when they fought at featherweight in 2014. I mean, he's been there, done that fought freaking everybody since been an interim champ. Um, you know, look great. Look at this dude's resume. It is stacked. I just saw earlier today, somebody talk about the last like 10 fights Poirier's had. It's nothing but the cream of the freaking crop. And honestly, man, he's done very, very well, but I do believe Connor sees stiffness. Connor sees holes in the game of Dustin Poirier. I think he's going to exploit it. I honestly think right now, from what I can gather, we are seeing the most mentally prepared, focused, driven, physically peaking Conor McGregor. I truly think on Saturday we see the best version of Conor McGregor we've ever seen. From what I can gather, I truly believe that. Does that mean Dustin Poirier can't win? No, not at all. Al, I think you're right, man. This fight gets beyond the second round. That is the game plan for Dustin Poirier. Drag Connor into deep water. Make it a yeah. bloody uh, slobber knocker war of attrition where the man with the will to win is going to come out on top. That's Dustin Poirier uh, in this matchup. Dustin Poirier needs to make this fight look nearly identical to the fight, the war he just had with Dan Hooker to get him in this spot. Speaking of which, Dan Hooker in that co-main event against Michael Chandler. Very intriguing matchup. I like that one quite a bit. But, um, you know, I, I see Poirier coming out, do, being Poirier, right? Um, Connors, I, we, we're not going to see Poirier shoot a double unless it's out of pure desperation and he's very hurt, right? I think we're going to see Dustin Poirier try to reach back in time and take that knockout away, take that win back. Uh, you know, I think that's on, I think that's in the back of his mind, you know, for, for us to come out even, I need to knock out Conor McGregor. And I think that's a big mistake here. I think Poirier is going to go out there, try to prove a point that he's the superior boxer with Conor McGregor. And I just don't think that's the case, man. I think Conor picks his shots, chooses his shots. I think Conor, if he doesn't get the KO in the first round, I think he gets it in that second round. I think I really, really like the under one and a half. I think that might be the sweet spot here. Um, absolutely not going to be mad at anybody taking that first round KO, second round KO prop for Conor McGregor. I think both are absolutely in play. Um, but I do, man. I think, I, uh, but but hey, two two clear paths to victory. And like I said, I think it's Conor early, Dustin late. Or even Dustin by decision is in the yeah. cards. Very yeah. possible. 
But like I said, man, I just feel like Connor has Dustin's number. I think he's been hand selected due to what Connor sees on tape. The timing factor as well plays into this. Connor's notoriously good for choosing someone who's fresh off a of war, somebody who's taken a lot of head trauma. You want to talk head trauma, man. Dan Hooker about took out Dustin Poirier a few different times in that five round war. I'm not sure if enough time has passed. I'm not going to hold it against Dustin too much, the damage he took in that fight, but I am worried about it. And I'm afraid Connor, with that piston left hand, that touch of death, I think he finds it. I lean Connor McGregor by early finish, round one or round two. Al, do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, just like a couple of mental notes that I took from, you know, watching. This is one of those fights where I'll actually go and watch the tape on both these guys because how could you not, right? And I feel like technically and like I I come from just a boxing background, so I don't really understand, you know, the the, the whole scope of MMA. But what I've seen from Connor is he has this he has this uh, tendency to turn turn his opponents into his punches where he'll he'll throw strikes that he's just throwing for them to intentionally evade. We saw that when he, you know, even with the the Poirier fight the first time he threw that spinning wheel kick. But what he's doing is he's turning his opponent to get into that left hand. Uh, I feel like I feel like that's it's almost like a thing where that era is almost past where like Dustin is is should be smart enough to know that Connor's going to try to turn him into his strikes. And I think that that Dustin just has to go straight forward and not try to evade him that when, you know, when he throws those wheel kicks to, he might have to go for a takedown or something like that. Um, uh, another thing is I think that Dustin is the best Southpaw that Connor's ever faced. And uh, that's the thing is like, he he's, you're right. He picked Poirier because he's a Southpaw. And I think it's something that he hasn't seen before. And I think that he wants to set up, you know, such a great knockout or, or whatever, whatever it is. He, he, there's something that he sees in Poirier that he wants to expose. But I think that, you know, looking at the tape, Poirier is, like I said, I think he's the best Southpaw that uh, Connor's ever faced. I think that, you know, the way that he, he fought Gaethje, uh, if he does the same thing, if he does the same thing with, with that he did with Gaethje, it's going to end badly. But I feel like he learned from that. And when you look at how he fought uh, Hooker and, you know, really – really well timed really you know picked his spots you know chose when to come in and stuff like that because like you know if he if he gets dragged into like a you know a brawl like he did against Gaethje uh Connor has that you know that he's got that skirmishing left hand where he's going to throw it out to, you know to try to you know to try to draw in the 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 you know, try to draw in the offense from Poirier, and that's when he's gonna the same thing that he did with Aldo. You know, the same thing that he did with, uh, um, you know, even in some of those rounds with with Floyd, he has that ability to draw you in and then stiff you with that with that left hand. And uh, you know, it's the best left hand probably in combat sports of our generation, I think. But I just feel like, you know. I think the difference between what I see and what you see is that I'm not as high on, I feel like, yeah, he might be super focused, but if you think about the two times that he didn't pick his opponent, which was Nate and I guess Habib, those two times he lost. Right. right. And I feel like he's picking a Poirier that he thinks exists, but I feel like Poirier is beyond where, where he has him scaled at mentally. You know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to gauge, but uh, I just feel like if this line gets to plus three hundred on Poirier, I th I feel like there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of potential for you know arbitraging where you know if you pick Connor first round knockout at you know the big plus money, Dustin to win at plus money, the under one and a half at plus money, you know you can kind of box in a uh, a nice little result there where you can you know have three different three different uh, results and make money. Uh, that's, I can't, I couldn't, I'm not confident. I'm not confident enough to lay like a minus 270 on Connor here. I just, I, I see a path where Poirier can, 
drag him out into those deep waters, do what Nate did to him, even in that second fight. In that second fight, there was times in those fourth, that fourth and fifth round where you could have made a case that Nate was winning the fight. So, and I don't know. I just, I just as much as you said that he's he wants to get him coming off of a war. When was the last time that McGregor was had a war? Right? He went ten rounds with Floyd. That's about you know when was when was that? Two thousand seventeen. Yeah. So like that's you know that's quite a bit. Like you know that's a that's a long layoff of of being battle tested, right? And so I feel like. Poirier is right in that sweet spot where, you know, I, you, you might be right that he might be uh, a still a little bit mushy in the head from that last fight. But I feel like I just, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm drawing too much into it, but I I'm, I'm high on Dustin here and I'm not as high on McGregor here. So I, I gotta go with, uh, you know, if this line gets up to that plus 290 plus 300 range, I'm going to be on, I'm going to be on Poirier. You got to stick to your guns, man. I respect it. One last thing that I want to put out there about this fight that I feel like a lot of people have forgotten. I almost forgot. So Conor McGregor on the big hiatus, right? Uh, we saw him fight Cowboy, and then it's been a year. You know, he will have been on the shelf a year now. Conor McGregor was sizing up a fight with Manny Pacquiao, another boxing match, right? Now, Manny Pacquiao's booked up. Manny Pacquiao can't make it. This was a fight that was supposed to take place, I'm assuming, at some point this year. Dustin Poirier, again, handpicked by Connor, essentially as a charity boxing warm up match to get in a little southpaw action yeah. to prepare for Manny Pacquiao. I mean, to the point where we saw like promotional posters, McGregor promotions, you know, they actually had this thing put together basically on their own. Dana White stepped in and said, uh, You guys think you're fighting and I'm not getting a cut not happening boys uh big daddy dana cashes up on a conor mcgregor fight every time sure enough that's get squashed we get this uh put together just a straight up mixed martial arts fight right same matchup same guys uh really they did the matchmaking right dana white yeah. never came up with this plan dana white uh but sure enough you know dustin poirier went out there won the fights he needed to win to be in a position to fight conor mcgregor so i do feel like this would be an absolute, you know, flub, game plan, falling apart. You know, I feel like it's Connor's fight to lose more than Poirier. You know, don't get me wrong, man. Poirier is a great fighter, really comes out there, can put it on Connor. And like I said, I, it's, a, it's a winnable fight for Poirier. Absolutely. If Poirier ends up a plus 300, I get it, man, fully. He's, I, I think he's got a better implied probability than that. You know what I mean? But for me, it's just too much, man. I think Connor's going to get her done. And uh, I do. I think he finds. I think he finds that KO early. And I think this fight's really all about. I think Uncle Dana is sitting there right now, saying to himself, "Conor McGregor, I need you to win this fight because there's only one fight that I got in my mind. That fight that keeps Dana White up at night. That second payday, Habib Conor too. Will Habib come back even if Conor wins?" Man, I got to say I'm doubtful. I don't know if we ever see it. I'm leaning towards a no. I don't think we ever see Habib Connor too. But man, Uncle Dana might pull out the checkbook, tell Habib, listen, I'm going to start, start writing zeros. You tell me when to stop. I need <laughs> this fight. Uh, and honestly, if we do get it again, I'll be very hyped. It'll be a great fight. And uh, I'm, I'm willing to watch it. So um, I think that's the narrative Dana White's trying to push. I think it's the narrative the UFC's trying to push. Uh, hey, narratives blow up in the UFC's face. Every freaking week, though, just look at Munir Lizez.